Hey guys. I'm just going to wait about three or four minutes to begin. I see there's a couple, oh, there's four people. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Katie. Ah, oh, <laughs> hey Samantha. <laughs> Just gonna give it to like 3.05. Let a couple people sign in. This is my first time doing this, so I hope we don't sound really dorky, but probably will. <laughs> Look really tired. All right, we got six people. Samantha, you better post pictures of your dress. All right, just give it like three more minutes. Let's eat people. Canceled? Oh no. <laughs> well, you have to save it for another party. I'm sure you have more. All right, two more minutes, guys. Just ignore my energy drink here. There's nine people. If you're watching, say who you are. I'd love to meet some of you guys. Hi, oh, Julia. Hey, Julia. Oh, there's my husband. For you guys that don't know, my husband Rocco um, also does WAG, and he's watching right now. He hit his goal weight today. He's... Um, uh, a few years ago, he was at his highest weight of 330 pounds, and today, this morning, he hit 215, 214. So we lost 115 pounds total. Is that crazy? All right, guys, give it one more minute till 3:03. And I'm a little sick, you guys, so that's why I look sick. <laughs> All of my clients who were sick this week, I swear you guys got me sick somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> All right, let's begin. It's 3.03. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction to who I am. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, and then we will get right into the content because I hate when videos ramble on and on. So I'm going to try to keep it pretty precise. And that should be about 20, 25 minutes of content. And then I'll make sure to go through and answer questions at the end. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is Coach Katie Holmes, uh, like the actress. <laughs> and uh, I started out as a WAG client. I uh, still am a WAG client, actually, because coaches need coaches, too. So uh, I've been checking in with Coach Hillary Reiser for uh, a long time. <laughs> and uh, long before that, I was, did bodybuilding competitions. So I'm very familiar with um, tracking macros, following meal plans, stuff like that. And I found that WAG, uh, flexible dieting, is the most sustainable, healthy way to reach your goals with nutrition. So you guys are very smart to be here. Um, and uh, what else? I used to be a lawyer. This is career number two, and it's much more fun. <laughs> I'm a big believer that your body sends you really clear signals about when you're on the right or wrong track with um, your uh, career and journey, and I was not on the right track. <laughs> uh, so for any of you out there who ever want to talk about changing your career and how scary that is, and um, I, I know it's really scary, so reach out to me. I would love to talk to you about it. But anyway, back to nutrition. So um like I said, I used to be a bodybuilder, now I do powerlifting, and uh, nutrition is my favorite topic in the world, so I'm very honored to work for WEG, and um, 
So yeah, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about something that uh, I wanted to um, address universally because it's something that I tend to talk about individually with all my clients. So I thought, why don't I just put it in a video so I can link the video to future clients who are struggling with this. So um, the topic today is precision with tracking. So all of you guys signed up for macro tracking program, right? That's what WAG is. You knew that when you signed up. So the foundation of our program is tracking macros, and that seems obvious. But the problem is that um, tracking macros really accurately and precisely is hard. I mean, it takes a lot of work, as all of you guys know. Nobody gets it right on their first day, <laughs> maybe in their first week, their first month. Uh, it's really kind of hard, and there's a reason for that. I mean, it's a really worthwhile skill but it's kind of a pain in the butt in the beginning. <laughs> so I'm gonna explain why and hopefully help you guys understand why every week your coaches are like, you gotta hit your macros, like next week let's really try to hit your macros. <laughs> because it can be kind of frustrating when you as the client, you're like, I am trying so hard, I'm doing my best, why am I not seeing progress, I'm tracking all my food and losing my mind. So I'm gonna explain why it's so important from the coach perspective and hopefully that'll help you and your coach have a better relationship and get you better results. So um, going backwards a little bit, um, so I'm looking at my notes on this other screen here. So I know a really funny thing happened before this podcast or this uh, Facebook Live. So on my other browser, I use a um, internet blocker to block Facebook during the day just so I like focus and you know do my check-ins. And um, the blocker blocked Facebook like five minutes before I was about to start this live thing. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to do it, and started freaking out, and, but we're all good now, we're here. So, <laughs> um, hello to all of you that just joined. Anyway, okay, going back to precision. So, let me scroll down here. All right, so like I said, accurate tracking is the foundation of your program. So let's think of it like a science experiment. So a lot of people, when they don't hit their macros, they struggle, and their coach says, you really need to hit your macros, there's like a, um, you, you, um, you kind of feel like you're being yelled at and you don't understand why, but let me explain why it's so important. So if you were going to do a science experiment and you were trying to collect data because you had a hypothesis and all that, I mean, we might be going back to your elementary school science class here, but <laughs> um, you need good data, right? So whatever experiment you're doing, you need good data to be able to come up with a conclusion. So the data in this case is your macros. So the reason we set that buffer zone of plus or minus five grams of carbs, plus or minus two grams of fat, is that that is our little window of accuracy. If you stay within that window, we have really good data about you and what's happening with your body. So um, if you are outside of that window, it doesn't mean you're bad, it doesn't mean you're doing a bad job, it just means that when your coach gets your check-in and looks at the data, we can't pull any really good, useful information from it. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is get you results, right? Results come from being able to look at that data and say, okay, let's use Rocco for example. Uh, Rocco, you know, he got within that buffer zone every day. Uh, he really hit his macros and his weight um, crept down a little bit this week. You know, he dropped on average a pound this week. All right, that's good, we're on the right track. Uh, he's feeling good, he's, you know, hunger isn't too high. Um, actually, his hunger is always high, but <laughs> um, then we have good data. It's an easy science experiment. We can continue. Um, his coach knows exactly what to do, and we move on to the next week, and we see good progress. So the other hand, if you don't get within that plus or minus buffer zone, your coach kind of looks at it and has to um, create hypotheses about what is going on, and the result is going to be your progress is slowed which is bad, right? I mean, you signed up for this, you're you know, paying money for this, you want results. So it is within your best interest to put all of your energy and attention on getting within that buffer zone of macros. So hopefully that helps relieve some of your like frustration about it. Um, I know it's not fun when you're putting in a lot of work and you feel like um, progress isn't happening or your coach just keeps telling you to hit your macros. <laughs> so now let's talk about some more pieces of precision. So Let's say that you are doing that. You're getting within that buffer range. You know you're hitting your macros every week. You've been doing this for a while now. Um, there are about like seven or eight other things. There's a list that um, we coaches kind of use 
of questions for you to ask yourself. Am I doing all these things? Um, and if you are doing some of them, they might be slowing down your progress. So I'm going to go through each one of them quickly, kind of in order of importance. So let's start here. All right, we got the buffer zone. All right, so a big one, especially this time of year, is estimating. So I know it's a really hard time of year because it's the holidays. And um, estimating, just as a definition, so we're all on the same page, just means that you uh, did not use your food scale to measure every gram of what you ate. So you went to a restaurant, you went to a party, um, you forgot your food scale, you forgot to measure something, you didn't want to measure it, so you just sort of guessed. <laughs> Any kind of estimating um, can throw off your progress or slow it down. Again, so our big goal here is try to get you the fastest progress. <laughs> that's what I want, that's what you want. So when you're estimating, the problem is that even if you're pretty close, you know, you're pretty good at it, you could be throwing yourself off by 50 calories, 100 calories a day, which like one day at a time isn't that big of a deal, right? But if you do that a lot of times in a week, like let's say you go out to lunch for work uh, five times in a week. You go out every weekday. Oh, my cat is crying. Come here. Okay. Um, let's say you go out to lunch five times. That adds up to, like, let's say you're off by 50 calories every day. Um, that's, you know, five times five, 250 calories throughout the whole week that you're off. So let's say you consumed 250 calories more than what you were supposed to consume based on the macros you got. So 250 calories, if you're like a smaller female, that could be your whole deficit, your whole calorie deficit, and your progress could stop that week just because of those the silly estimation errors. So that would be really annoying if you, you know, you checked in, you feel like you hit your macros, you did a good job, and you didn't see any progress. That would be so annoying. <laughs> so for your own sanity and um, like excitement about the program, you want to avoid estimating too frequently. So on the other hand, if you just went out once a week, if you had like a nice dinner date with your significant other and, you know, you didn't bring your food scale to the restaurant, but you did a pretty good job estimating one day a week, not as big of a deal. And also a big uh, caveat to all this is that it depends on where you are in your journey. So sometimes we're in a place where we've got a really big event coming up. We have a really aggressive goal and we need to be more precise. So um, I like to think of it like a spectrum of precision. So if zero on the scale is no tracking at all, like before you joined WAG, you weren't tracking, you had no idea what your intake was. And then 10 is like you are getting ready for your wedding, for a bodybuilding competition. Um, oh, there's little things popping up. Okay. Um, you need to track literally every gram of everything that goes into your body. Um, you want to be, you kind of want to decide where you are based on what your goal is. So some people, you know, when you sign up for WAG, you, um, you've got to be in a bikini in three months and you're nervous about it and you really need to be like closer to that, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten accuracy range. And then for some people who have been with WAG for a long time, they've kind of met their goal, they're ready to maintain, they can be more on closer to the three, four, five, six range. You see what I'm saying? So, so if you are starting to get frustrated and you feel like your progress isn't moving, maybe it's time to creep it up toward the more precise end of the scale. And that's what all these things we're talking about are doing for you. So going back to estimating, that would put you down on the spectrum of precision, right? Um, if you don't know what's going in your body and you're not weighing on your scale, um, it's going to throw things off. So that was number two, that's estimating. Oh, side note, I don't know if, um, how much we know about this yet, but there's going to be a feature in Seismic coming soon where you can tell your coach how many times you estimated that week, which is really cool. So since the feature is not in there now, I do recommend being really clear with your coach about, um, you know, in your daily notes, like today I went to dinner and I didn't bring my food scale, so it was estimated. Um, or I estimated three times this week, something like that, and it'll be help you help your coach know what's going on. All right, so uh, number three is the accuracy of the entries that you choose in MyFitnessPal. So for anybody who first joins MyFitnessPal, it is crazy. Like when you type in one food, there are so many entries, right? It's overwhelming. So, I mean, you just type in like 
chicken and there's a thousand different versions of chicken. There's grilled chicken, baked chicken, raw chicken, and you're like, I have no idea <laughs> which one is the right one. So that's where the accuracy of the chosen entries in MyFitnessPal comes in. So I can sort of help you figure out the right entry. One big way is to look for the verified entries. So let's say, for example, you do type in chicken, just, just chicken. So you'll see some of the entries have the green check mark by them, which means they are verified. And uh, that means that MyFitnessPal as a company went through and looked at the macros to make sure they're correct and matched up with like the USA, USDA data or wherever the calories come from. Um, so that's your best bet. And that with chicken, it's a little different because there's the cooked versus raw thing, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So, all right, so you say, let's say you type in something and there is no verified entry. So, you know, it's kind of a unique food. Then you can just Google the nutrition for it. So let's say it's like um, an apple. You can just type in like Granny Smith apple into my fitness pot or uh, Google and the nutrition facts will pop right up. And then you can look at them and sort of cross-reference them with the MyFitnessPal numbers and make sure they're correct. And um, most people eat pretty repetitively. So if you do this once for the foods that you eat a lot, you're done. You know, you've got it. It's saved in MyFitnessPal. It'll remember it for next time. So it's more time-consuming in the beginning when you first join WAG. It gets a lot easier as time goes on, especially if you start to, like, um, get your macro-friendly foods you eat a lot. So... Um, Verified entry, cross reference with either Google Nutrition or calorieking.com is another resource if you can't find a good Google entry for the nutrition. But so you guys get the point. Basically, when you type in my fitness pal, there are some ridiculous entries in there <laughs> because users can enter their own stuff. So I could put in something in there and just make up crazy macros and then someone else could find it and it's not right. You know what I mean? And, um, you can sometimes find some weird things. Like if you scan a barcode, the wrong thing will pop up. So just make sure to be careful with your chosen entries. So that was number three. And uh, moving on to number four, being very efficient here, uh, is extra bites. So this one is a tough one in the holidays. Um, this is everything that the little bites you take throughout the day that you don't track. So you're cooking dinner and you, you try something, you just take a little bite of it. Um, you pick off your kid's plate, you kick off your, pick off your spouse's plate. Um, those little things, unfortunately, when you're trying to be really strict, add up. So um, I remember this was eye-opening to me when I was first with WAG. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I always eat my husband's food. <laughs> That's what he's there for, right? Like, to try his stuff. Um, but when I started actually tracking it, I mean, not that you're going to be 100% accurate, but, you know, you can put two french fries as your, you know, and put that in my fitness pal. But um, those little bites add up when you're trying to be really precise and you want to kick your progress into gear. Um, cooking oil, cooking spray, that's another big one. So um, a lot of people before they join WAG, they'll like dunk the oil into the pan and cook with so much of it. And then when their fat is cut down to 50 grams and they're like, oh no, I can't, how do I cut down my fat? <laughs> so uh, a lot of people switch to cooking spray, which is great. Also need to measure the cooking spray though. And here's why. So try this out the next time you're using it. So take the can, take your food scale, measure it on the food scale and like tear it out so it's at zero. Spray it under your pan, put it back on the food scale and it should say like negative two, negative three, negative four, something like that. That's how many grams of fat that you used. So like in the morning when I make Kodiak cakes, I probably use, I use about like a three second spray. So I track that in my fitness pal as three grams of fat. So you do need to track that. Unfortunately, it adds up. <laughs> uh, like, let's say you do that every day. Like, that's three grams of fat you're missing every day. Adds up to, was that, 27 calories a day. Again, that could really screw up your progress, which is so annoying because it's just stupid cooking spray. <laughs> um, okay, so that was number four, like extra bites, cooking spray, little annoying things. Uh, bites of your kid's food. Let's see, okay, next is number five, is inaccurate units. So a lot of people when they start using MyFitnessPal, um, sometimes they will add me as their friend on MyFitnessPal or they'll send me screenshots of their logs and I'll notice that they, um, this is not your fault because you know it's, it seems okay to use like 
tablespoons, cups, um, one apple, stuff like that. These units of measurement are not accurate, and here's why. So let's say you have an apple, for example. So you have a like a um, gala apple. It could be a big one. It could be a smaller one. Um, and the difference in calories could be quite a lot, actually. It could be like 80 calories for a smaller one, 120 for a big one. So if you just put one apple in my fitness pal, who, no one knows if that's right or not. <laughs> so if you, again, if you do that every day, you see like the pattern here. It adds up, slows down your progress. You're mad. You want to quit. <laughs> so what you need to do is weigh the apple, you know, cut it up into slices and then weigh it in grams and then enter apple grams in my fitness pal or ounces or whatever units you prefer. And then same thing with tablespoons, cups. Like um, I totally used to do this. Like when my meal plan said one, you know, half a cup of oatmeal, it's like you get the biggest half cup you possibly can <laughs> and try to sort of cheat. Um, when you do it in grams, you avoid that cheating, that messing up the units. So um, it, like in my house, we don't even really have tablespoons, cups, stuff like that because we use grams for everything. It's just more accurate. Um, let's see. Okay, so that was number five, inac inaccurate units. All right. Now, okay, I said we would come back to cooked versus raw, right? This is one that drives people crazy when they sign up for WEG. <laughs> I get so many messages like, what do you mean I can't cook my food or measure it raw? Like, that makes no sense. I can't do that. And I know, like, I know it's tedious. I felt the same way when I first started. But when I explain why we have to do it that way, usually it makes sense to people. So think about um, a piece of meat, going back to our chicken example, for example, uh, or some vegetables. The piece of chicken is way bigger before you cook it than after. And it can really vary based on how long you cook it. So if you want it, like, really well done, <clears throat> it will shrink even more. So in general, a piece of meat will lose about a quarter of its weight while cooking. So if that thing weighed 100 grams before you started, it might weigh like 75 grams after you cook it. If you, if you measure it as 75 grams of chicken, it will be wrong. Do you, know, you see what I'm saying? So the ideal situation is to weigh it before you cook it. So you'd, you'd put in 100 grams raw chicken, then cook it, and then it doesn't matter. Or if it's too late, um, if you are like cooking for a bunch of people and it's too inconvenient, just make sure to specify that it's cooked, like grilled, um, baked, whatever it is. And it might be a little bit off, but just make sure to specify if it's cooked or raw. Uh, same with veggies because they will shrink down a lot too. Uh, okay, that was cooked versus raw. Okay, only a couple more. Those were really the big ones. So. If you get all those ones right, the one through five that we talked about, or one through six, you're doing really good. Um, I'm sure a lot of my clients already know all of this, but it's good to kind of confirm that you're doing a good job too. I mean, if you're doing all that stuff, you're like a really pro tracker and you're going to have really good results. So. But these last two little ones, um, this one I'm actually seeing a lot right now because it's the holidays, which is alcohol. So if more than 30% of your carb or fat uh, macros are being designated toward alcohol, that's a lot. I mean, you can technically fit that in your macros, but keep in mind that alcohol is a weird, it's like some people call it like the fourth macronutrient because it's like the weird cousin of the <laughs> protein, carbs, and fat, and it is digested differently than the other macros. So even though you can use the WAG alcohol calculator that all of you know about, I'm sure, to uh, transfer the calories into carbs or fats, it doesn't mean that your body processes it the same way or that it has the same benefits. I mean, 100 calories of sweet potato is um, gonna be a lot more beneficial for your body and your workouts than 100 calories of um, wine. <laughs> and I know like it's, alcohol's totally fine in moderation. I understand um, that it's a fun time of year and you wanna indulge a little bit, but just, just notice, like kind of do some math in your head and, are, you know, are a third of your calories going toward alcohol? Because if so, that could be why you're not seeing progress. <laughs> so just something to keep in mind. Uh, let's see. Okay, last one. And um, this one comes up. It was a problem I used to have, so I always like to make sure to mention it. The little extra things. So that includes gum, Tic Tacs, mints. Uh, those little 
dumb things that you just sort of, you know, there might be a, a bowl of mints on, the, you know, your office, you know, the secretary's desk, and you grab them as you walk by, and or you chew gum. I used to chew gum so much all the time because I was so hungry, and I didn't know that you needed to include the calories because they do count as carbs. Like even sugar alcohol and sugar-free gum counts toward your carbs and your calories. So I would literally chew like a pack a day. It was so bad. So if you are chewing a ton of gum, having a ton of mints, Tic Tacs, stuff like that, you do need to count them because that could add up to, you know, 25, 30, 50 calories a day that could be stopping your progress. So anyway, all I want for all you guys is to have really good progress because that's why you're here and the WAG coaches more than anything want to help you succeed and have the body of your dreams. So I hope some of those tips helped. I'm sure they were annoying, but uh, I always like to joke with my husband that, well, actually our CEO, Adi, said this, if you're going to be flexible with your tracking, like not accurate with your tracking, you need to also be flexible with your results. <laughs> so if you want like consistent results, you need to be consistent with your tracking too. So thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, I'm just going to skim over. I think you guys just said hello and ask questions, but yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. I was so nervous to do this. So I appreciate it. <laughs> and you guys have a good rest of your night. It's uh, like evening on the East Coast. So hopefully you guys have some fun plans. I don't. I'm just going to hang out with my cats. <laughs> Think of ways to help you guys get good results. Anyway, I love you guys very much, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a good night. Mwah. <laughs>